So, yesterday we proved uh, that if 0 to m prime to m to m double prime is exact, uh, this is exact, then for any module n 0 to home a m prime n m double prime n to home a m n to home a m prime n is exact. Uh, so, just wanted to remark that this is the converse is also true that if if this is true that for any module n this is exact that will imply this is also exact. One can uh, you know to say that this is surjective and this is kernelless image one can take n appropriately m m prime and so on and uh, prove this. So, I will simply remark that this is uh, write the modified statement that uh, the sequence is exact if and only if for any module n this is exact. Similarly, the sequence 0 to n prime to n to n double prime is exact. if and only if home for any module m home m n dash to home m n to home m n double prime is exact. So, this is again uh, usual diagram chasing the exactly the way we did for the case of uh, exact these proofs yes, uh, last time. So, suppose you take a, a let C be a class of class of A modules. Okay. Suppose you know, you have a you know suppose your A is a field K. You can think of C as finite dimensional vector spaces over K. So you are basically looking at from the category of A modules. We are taking a subclass. Okay. A numerical function. lambda from c to n is said to be additive if for any exact sequence short exact sequence so this i'll write like this 0 to m to m double prime to 0. We have uh, okay, lambda of m prime minus lambda of m plus lambda of m double prime is 0. Okay. So, as I said, if you want to have a look at this example, suppose your ring A is a field and C is set of all finite dimensional vector spaces over A. 
okay. Then you can take this lambda as dimension. If you take lambda as dimension, then it is a numerical function. Will it be an additive function? Suppose you have a v1 to v2 to v3 to 0. If you have a vector space, uh, if you have three vector spaces, finite dimensional vector spaces, okay. can we say that dimension of v1 minus dimension of v2 plus dimension of v3 is 0? This is exact, yeah. If this is exact, what we know is that v3, so this is surjective map, therefore v3 is isomorphic to v2 modulo kernel, which is the image which is isomorphic to v1. So, you can write this as isomorphic to v2 mod v1. So, therefore, dimension of v3 is, it is basically rationality theorem. Okay. So, rationality theorem says that this is, if we take C to be, uh, if your phi, uh, ring A is a field and C is set of all uh, finite dimensional vector spaces over A, then lambda, the lambda equal to dimension of V is an additive function. Suppose I have a, suppose C be a class of, uh, I mean now I am talking about general some class over a general ring, be a class of modules of A modules and lambda be an additive function. Suppose I have a exact sequence. So, uh, I ha yeah, I have an exact sequence like this m 1 to m 2 m n minus 1 to m n to 0. Okay. So, call this phi 1, phi 2, phi n minus 1. Lambda is given to be an additive function and this is an exact sequence. Here n could be any finite number. Can we or would you like to say something about lambda? Modu modules in C for example, I am talking about modules, these are all m 1, m 2 etcetera are all modules in C. Okay. So, first of all, this is something that uh, I probably uh, mentioned it in some time back. Uh, see, if I have an exact sequence like this, I can split this into a lot of short exact sequences, right. So, this is, so 0 to m 1 to m 2 to image of phi 2 to 0, right. This is an exact sequence. Now, I have image of phi 2 which is also same as kernel of phi 3. to m 3 to image of phi 4 to 0, right and so on 0 to. So, I have image of phi n minus 1 is m n itself. So, we can talk about the previous image phi n here, image phi n is no, sorry phi n minus 1 this is m n to 0 to m n minus 1 to uh, image of 
phi n minus 2 which is same as kernel phi n minus 1. Okay, I have these are all short exact sequences arising from here. Okay, this the sequence is exact. Then I have several short exact sequences. Suppose your function lambda is additive on C. What can we say here looking at this one? Lambda of m 1 minus lambda of m 2 plus lambda of so, for that we need one condition that this is also here. We have started by started by taking m 1, m 2 etcetera. We are just taking a class, we are just taking a, an abstract class. So, we do not know if I take m 1, m 2 and so on and look at an exact sequence like this that need not necessarily imply that all these are in that class. Okay. So, therefore, if I assume that you know all these are in this class, then I, I can apply lambda the, pro, uh, uh, the property of lambda on each of them lambda m 1 lambda of m 1 minus lambda of m 2 plus lambda of m 3 is 0 uh, sorry lambda of this is 0. But now from here see lambda of this plus lambda of m 3 plus lambda minus lambda, uh, lambda of this minus lambda of m 3 plus lambda of image phi 4 is 0 or in other words lambda of image phi 2 is same as lambda of m 3 minus lambda of image phi 4. But now image phi 4 I can get from the next exact I can keep going down what do I get? So, okay. so, let us now complete this proposition and then this is suppose there is an exact sequence uh, as given below. such that image phi i is also in C for all i. Then I will reserve that conclusion, let us see what it is and then we will come back and write that. What we have from the first exact sequence, we have lambda of m 1 minus lambda of m 2 plus lambda of image phi 2 is 0. Now, from the second exact sequence image phi 2 is lambda of m 1 minus lambda of m 2 plus image phi 2 is lambda, lambda of image phi 2 is lambda of m 3 minus lambda of image phi 4. This is equal to lambda of m 3 minus lambda of image phi 3 uh, sorry phi 4. But what would be image phi 4 from the next one it will be lambda of m 4 minus lambda of image phi 5 yeah lambda. Of. So, this is this is 0 that implies lambda of m 1 minus lambda of m 2 plus lambda m 3 minus this is lambda of m 4 minus of minus plus lambda of image phi 5 equal to 0. Sorry, it will be Yeah, it will be 6. Uh, 
uh, this will be uh, next will be image 0 to image phi 4 equal to kernel phi 5 to m 5 to image phi 6, it will be 6 itself. Yeah, you are sorry, no, 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 we do not need. See, at every time now image phi 2 is kernel phi 3. Oh, no, no, this is this should be 3 image phi 3 itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this should be 3 and 4. See, from M3, the image, I mean, the map starts from M3 is phi 3. So, the M2 image phi 3. So, ultimately, what are we going to get? Lambda of M1 minus lambda of M2 plus minus 1 power n lambda of m n or in other words summation minus 1 power i lambda m i is 0 i from 1 uh, i minus 1. So, this is n minus 1, 1 to n minus 1 sorry 1 to n. So, let us complete this this is i from 1 to n minus 1 minus 1 power i minus 1 lambda of m i equal to 0. If I have an additive function that now additive function means if you take a short exact sequence the alternate sum of uh, the corresponding numerical values is 0. If I have an additive function and if I have a exact sequence coming from the class of modules where lambda is an additive function, then what this says is that you have alternate sum can be extended to long exact sequence, I mean not long exact sequence, this exact, exact sequence which is not necessarily the short exact sequence. Okay. One typical example is if I take a vector space A, sorry, if I take a uh, field A and finite dimensional vector spaces over A. Okay. Okay. So, now let us move on to study a very important classes of modules called uh, tensor products. Okay. Let A be uh, M n be finitely general uh, M n be A modules. A bilinear map a bilinear map F from m cross n to p, where p is an a module is uh, okay. a map f from m n m cross n to p where p is an a module is said to be bilinear if for each x in m y mapping to f x y is linear and for each y in n x going to f x y is a linear. In fact, is it to be a bilinear if or in other words for each 
x 1 x 2 in m y 1 y 2 in n a b in a f of x 1 plus x 2 y is f x 1 y plus f x 2 y f x y 1 plus y 2 is f x y 1 plus f x y 2 and similarly f of a x comma a x comma y is a times f of a x comma y is a times f x y f of x b y is b times f x y. The usual definition of bilinear, linear in each variable. Okay. So, suppose I have a module m, uh, modules m and n. Okay. Our aim is to define what is called a tensor product of m and n. This is tensor product of m and n is uh, or the tool tensor product is a very important uh, tool in the homological uh, algebra. Homological algebra or the methods of uh, homological algebra are applied in every part of uh, you know, commutative algebra, algebraic geometry and so on, even in analysis and so on these are uh, uh, very important. Analysis the approach is slightly different, but this is uh, a very important uh, module the tensor product of m and n. So, I mean how do we construct this? What do we do is we first look at uh, take the free module be the free module uh, be a free module or you know I will uh, I will just write let f be equal to uh, a m cross n or this is also I will write in this form. What does this mean? I take as many copies of a as the number of elements of m and n. So, if m and n are infinite or even m is infinite this is a uh, direct sum of infinitely many copies of uh, m and n uh, infinitely many copies of a. So, for each x comma y I have a e you can think of an element e in e x comma y in f that is the element where the the coordinate with respect to x comma y is 1 rest of them 0. See there are as many copies of a as the number of elements here. So, this free module f you can think of this as generated by generate by generated by the set E x y where x y is in m cross n. It is generated by this set. For example, if m is z 2 to take a simple example n is z 3. Okay. 
this f will have 6 elements, not 6 elements, this will have 6 copies. Your a will be, I mean f will be generated by e 1 0, uh, e 0 0, e 1 0, e 0 1, e 1 1, e 0 2, e 1 2. Now, this E 0 0 is, this is isomorphic to A 6, this is 1 0 0 0 0, I mean the 0, the first entry is non 0, the rest of them is 0. I consider the first copy of A corresponding to the element 0 comma 0, the second in, second copy of A as element corresponding to this one and so on. So, this is I take this free module, now what do I do? I want to see my aim is to aim is to say that every bilinear map from m cross n to a module p filters through m tensor n, m tensor n I am trying to construct the unique object with the universal mapping property that every bilinear map from m cross n to an a module p filters through or extends to m tensor n to p. So, first what I will do is on this one I take a sub module ok, let d Yes, I am taking, do, do you understand this definition? Okay. I am taking as many copies of A as the number of elements of M cross N. Okay. So, here I am just indicating what is E, see when I say uh, in the standard vector space R N, when we say E 1 this is 0. Where this is 1 on the first entry. So, if I write this m cross n like this 0 bar 0 bar 1 bar 0 bar 0 bar 1 bar uh, 1 bar 1 bar. So, here this these two bars are different one should be careful with that 0 bar 2 bar 1 bar 2 bar. So, for each element I have a copy A. Okay. So, this is the basis for that, no, for that entry is for the first, this is the first entry let us say. Then I have a corresponding copy of A here. So, I will have 1 0, this is the generator of that part, that copy. That is exactly I am denoting it by E 0 0. So, here I mean I am just following this notation here that is how. Okay. So, for each element x y I have a generator E x y. My idea is to create a module such that any bilinear map from m to n m, m cross n to p filters through m tensor n. So, let us look at this d be the sub module generated by by the elements x 1 plus x 2 comma y minus x 1 comma y minus x 2 comma y in f. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am not, uh, 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 this is not the only element. Okay. Uh, see, 
looking at this immediately you will have a tendency to say that this is 0. What is our f? For each for each element in m cross n I have e there. So, I am in fact ok. So, I should probably write like this e x 1 plus x 2 comma y minus e x 1 y minus e x 2 y. This now you understand that they are different right. Similarly, I will look at E x y 1 plus y 2 minus E x y 1 minus E x y 2. Similarly, E a x y minus a times E x comma y E x a y minus a times e x comma y. So, for all x 1, x 2, x in m y 1, y 2, y in n and a in n. So, now let us uh, you know just set some more uh, I mean notation. See how does any element of f look like? Any element of f is a finite linear combination of elements of the form e x y uh, right. So, I can any element. So, if I take an element m in f, m will be a i e x i y i some finite linear combination like this ok. Now, in in the module m cross n there is an element called of the form a i x i y i. Okay. So, there is an element corresponding to this I have an element E of the summation. These two are not the same this is this is a an element in F which is a linear combination of some basis elements while this is a basis element. Okay. So, moreover you can uh, so that difference you should uh, keep in mind. Okay. Now, so my d is all the elements of this form and I take Uh, my module let t be equal to f modulo d. I take t to be f modulo d. This looks like to be a you know highly abstract horrendous set of uh, elements here or the uh, module, but it is not so. Once we use this, we will understand. We can uh, easily see. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Which one? Of 
No, no, this is, uh, I'm talking about this ai dot xi, this as an element in m cross n. This one. Huh. Yeah, 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 this, that will be different from uh, this one. Is that what you are saying? No, here I am, uh, no, I am not talking about elements in D or anything. I am just talking about simply representation of elements in F. See, F, the definition has enough things to get confused. You know, you can't, you can simply accept that F is this, but to understand that it takes a little uh, more effort. That is why I tried to uh, explain this part. What I am trying to say here is that I have any element of f looks like this. Okay. This is different from this element. That is all I am trying to say. There is a so there is a basis element corresponding to this element in the m cross n. Each x i y i is in m cross n, but the no you take the corresponding element in f and take the linear combination there and take the linear combination m cross n and look at the corresponding element they are different. You have to, but once you come to d what do we have when we d is Submodule generated by elements of this form. So, in D, modulo D, these two are equal. Okay, let me just uh, take simple example. I have my M is A X Y. Okay. So, I have this, uh, so I have yeah, E A X Y, well not this same as the other one, uh, let us see what it is. This is sorry. Uh, what I want to say is, yeah, I have m is this and I have a times x y. Okay. Now, a times e x y modulo d, see what are the elements in d generated by a times x y minus or e of a x y minus e e of a x comma y minus a times e of x y. So, if I take uh, this is e of a x comma y minus this is 0 in f mod d, right. Or in other words, if I take the corresponding bar, this is same as in f mod d. Okay. Similarly, if I take E in f, these two are not the same, because this is a basis element, this is a basis element. You cannot have one as a scalar multiple of the other. But then modulo d, these two are same. That is how we have constructed. Similarly, what can you say about E x1 plus x2 minus uh, sorry, comma y? This is same as E x1 comma y minus E x2 comma y. Sorry, plus in f mod d. So, now let us, let me define T and we have correspondingly, you know, 
using these properties I have I can extend this further in in uh, mo f mod d this is same as uh, summation yeah this one ok. So, let t be equal to f mod d. Suppose, I have a bilinear map f from m cross n to p be a bilinear map. What does that say? It says f of x 1 plus x 2 y is same as f of x 1 comma y plus f of x 2 comma y. Uh, and f of and so on you know I will I, I will not write down all the conditions f of x comma y 1 plus y 2 correspondingly and so on. Once I have this map this induces a map let us say f tilde from f to p. What is my f is free module on m cross n. So, what I do is f tilde of E x comma y is f of x y. E x y is you know a generating set for f, it is a basis for uh, f. So, I define f tilde of this or if you want to uh, define it on a general element summation a i e x i y i same as summation a i f of x i y i. Okay. This induces map from f, um, f induces map from f to p. Now, our aim is to say that every bilinear map filters through the tensor product or in other words I can extend it to a map from m tensor n to p. So, here I have so I have this map uh, m, m n to p. Now, I have a natural inclusion here to f and this I have a map from f to p. I am looking for something here t to p. So, I have this this is f tilde okay, and I am looking for some f prime which again you know comes from f. See t is a quotient of f. Suppose, I have a module homomorphism let us call it uh, k 1 to k 2 okay. and uh, let us say L is a sub module of k 1. Okay. When can I say that it will you know it will uh, induce a map from here to here? If L is contained in the kernel of f see then L is naturally killed by f, then you can always extend uh, you know extend this map or you know this f will induce a map from here to here. So, therefore, now I have a map from f to p to say that there is a map from t to p if I say something I am done what should I say that d is contained in the kernel, but is that so f is a bilinear map. Okay. So, if I take a uh, contained in the kernel of f tilde what is f tilde of e x 1 plus 
x2 comma y minus e x1 comma y minus x2 comma y. If I take an element in D, this will be 0 because this is by definition what is this? This is f of x1 plus x2 comma y minus f of x1 comma y minus f of x2 comma y. Right? F tilde oh well, so this is check f tilde is a bilinear, uh, a linear, sorry. That is a that is f tilde is linear by definition in the sense that see it is like I am defining uh, this is exactly like the way I define linear transformation from uh, a vector space with a given basis to you know another vector space with a given set of elements. So, here I am defining this form a basis for f. So, I am defining it on the basis or in other words so, uh, uh, to make a precise definition it is f tilde of summation a i e x i y i is summation a i f x i y i. So, so this definition also implies that f tilde of e x 1 plus x 2 y Uh, what what are you saying? F tilde of ha huh, that's exactly what we are saying. In the on elements of see this is yeah this is equal to f of f x 1 y plus f x 2 y no that that is uh, I mean uh, <laughs> there is no problem this is exactly what we are saying this is equal to f tilde of e x 1 y plus f tilde of e x 2 y. Right? Yeah. Or in other words f tilde of e x 1 plus x 2 y minus x 1 y minus x 2 y this is 0. It is not. I am not saying this is this. This need not be zero. You are taking that to the left hand side. Huh? Then you are taking minus inside and f tilde is. I mean, by definition, f tilde is uh, linear. That's how I am defining f tilde. Okay. So let me write down the definition of f tilde here. How do I? How does any element of f look like? So let's take m to be in f. M is of the form summation. A i e x i y i. Okay, I define f tilde of m to be equal to summation A i f x i y i. This is so f tilde is de, I mean linear by definition. This is exactly how we define the in the vector spaces also. Right, we define it on a basis elements and extend it linearly to the whole vector space. This is exactly what we are doing here. So, therefore, this is 0. So, what we have shown is that f tilde of a is 0 for all a in D. This implies f tilde induces a map 
f prime from f mod d to p. Now, let me denote this by, so this is, see here f tilde is only a linear, f prime Okay, we do not have to, uh, we, we have not defined what is called bilinearity here, but f prime of x 1 plus uh, e by definition itself, e of x 1, uh, okay, let us, uh, le let me just say that this is what we call it as t, I have already defined this. we will prove that this is, uh, this t is uniquely determined up to isomorphism in the sense that uh, if I have this universal mapping property that any bilinear map from m cross n to a module p, it filters through uh, another module t prime, then t prime has to be isomorphic to t. We will complete the properties of tensor product in the next class.